Night Moves is a 1975 film that was directed by Arthur Penn, and it stars Gene Hackman, Jennifer Warren, Susan Clark, with supporting performances from Melanie Griffith and James Woods. The original screenplay was written by Scottish writer Alan Sharp. This movie is one of the best psychological thrillers that I think you'll see. It has an ending that not only comes as a complete surprise, but it also pulls everything together in a new way, one that we hadn't thought of before. If you like private eye movies, you definitely need to check this one out. This may have been one that you completely missed at the box office. The private eye this time is named Harry Mosby, played by Gene Hackman. He's a former pro football player and a man of considerable intelligence whose wife, played by Susan Clark, runs an antique business. He happens to be a private detective for reasons that are vaguely hinted at involving his childhood. A Hollywood divorcee clinging to the last threads of her glamour that once won her a movie director and half the other men in Hollywood hires him to trace down her missing daughter. Harry takes the case, pausing only long enough to track down his own missing wife, who is, as it turns out, having a not especially important affair with a man with a beach house in Malibu. Harry confronts this man, and like many other scenes in the movie, it is done with dialogue so blunt in its complete truthfulness, that the characters really do escape their genre. Harry traces the missing girl to her stepfather, who's a pilot in the Florida Keys, and he goes there to bring her back. From the moment that he sets eyes on his stepfather's mistress, the movie really takes off. The mistress is played by a relatively unknown actress and sometimes singer named Jennifer Warren who has an amazingly beautiful gaze and a complete air of confidence in each scene. She creates a character so refreshingly eccentric, so sexy, in such an unusual way, that it's all the movie can do to get past her without stopping to admire this gorgeous lady. But somehow it does. The plot involves former and present lovers of the girl and her mother, sunken treasure, conflicts across generations, and murders more complex by far than they seem at first. The movie was filmed in the fall of 1973, but for somewhat undisclosed reasons at the time, it wasn't released until 1975. You'll find out in just a few minutes what that reason was, and in doing so, you'll understand the production company's reasoning for the way they did things. The film's original title was going to be Dark Tower. It had to be changed, though, so that it wouldn't be confused with the 1974 blockbuster hit, The Towering Inferno. While Gene Hackman's character is in the Florida Keys, he's introduced to the teenager that he's looking for named Deli, played by a very, very young Melanie Griffith. And she is indeed staying with her stepfather, who's just completely happy at the thought of getting rid of her. That Jennifer Warren character named Paula is exactly Harry's type. She's active, humorous, and kind of no-nonsense. She's been around, though. She tells Harry that she's taught school, kept house, waited tables, did a little stripping, and a little hooking, too. Harry keeps a small chess set with him, and he plays moves on it to keep his mind off the real world. In a key scene in the movie, Harry shows Paula the three night moves that's based on a match that was played in 1922 that would have enabled one player to win. But that player didn't see the moves. He played something else and lost. Harry, in telling this story, states that he must have regretted that every day of his life. I know I would have. These words take on a real prophetic meaning later on. Killings end up happening, and once we've seen the film, we know that the clues are there. Only Harry couldn't see them at the time. 
Now, the house that belongs to the James Woods character, Quentin, was owned by Phil Kaufman, road manager for Graham Parsons at the time of his death. Kaufman's subsequent actions became the basis for the film Grand Theft Parsons in 2003. The cast and crew for this movie were shooting at the house on the day the police came to question Kaufman. At that time, the director turned to Gene Hackman and said, Man, I think we're shooting the wrong movie. Harry refers to playing against Alex Karras in his football career while he's talking in the film. As it turns out, Karras would eventually go on to marry Susan Clark, who plays Harry's wife, in this film. Paula, played by Jennifer Warren, has a conversation with Gene Hackman's character, and she tells him that the first boy that ever touched her breast was a kid named Billy Danruther, which is the name of the Humphrey Bogart character in Beat the Devil from 1953. It's believed that Faye Dunaway turned down a role in the film, strictly because in October of 1973, when filming started, she took on the female lead in Chinatown that was released in 1974. It also started filming in October of 1973. Coincidentally, though, she had broken up with one of this movie's stars, Harris Eulin, the year before after a two-year relationship, and that may have had an influence on her choice of films. In the movie, Harris Eulin's character has a limp. That limp is real. He had an accident before filming started but the director still hired him for the role. But this limp is never addressed in the film at all. As initially shot, the sex scene between Gene Hackman and Jennifer Warren was longer and much more vividly intense than we see in the final product. This original shoot was intimately emotional as well as very physical. Due to a lot of controversy around this scene, the director decided to delete this more elaborate encounter and instead go with a much shorter version. The screenwriter Alan Sharp fought for the longer scene to be included in the film, and he felt really offended by the decision to go with the shorter cut. Now, in the movie, we're introduced to the lovely Melanie Griffith, and at the time of filming, she's only 16 years old. But if you've seen the film, you really have to ask yourself, how in the world did they film these nude scenes with her that are very explicit in numerous shots? There's quite a few shots of her just being topless, but those have a tendency to be a little more mask and not so in your face. Her skinny dipping diving scene is not. She is amazingly unclothed during this fairly long sequence. So how in the world did the production company get around the fact that she was only 16 years old? Well, she turned 16 on August 9th, 1973. Filming began in October of 1973. Production was halted for several months on the film to let Melanie Griffith age a little bit. Because when you see her in the movie, she is young. She looks almost 12 years old. During that time of shutdown, the film was mostly edited until they could drop in the pickup shots of who would be then 18-year-old Griffith and her nude scenes. They filmed those scenes and then inserted them into the final cut. So that's the reason for the 17-month delay in production for the film's premiere in March of 1975. Night Moves is one of those rare films where all the individual elements fell into place like a completed jigsaw puzzle. The casting, photography, editing, and the direction are just amazing. If you've never seen this movie, take the time to watch it. You'll thoroughly enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.